Chiara Fano, I'm gonna make this so under five minutes so that we can go and eat. I need you to close your eyes. Imagine that all of the cows and sheep that graze on pasture in the world, and it's important, in pasture, not in little pens. Imagine that they're all gone from those grasslands. <laughs> My next question is, what are on those slopes instead of the cows? That's the question that no one answers when suggesting that we move away from eating meat for environmental reasons. You can open your eyes now. <laughs> In an area like New Zealand, filled with hills and mountains, growing annual crops like soy for tofu or corn for polenta is not realistic, and it's actually not environmentally responsible. I come from the Canadian prairies, where there used to be millions of bison that roamed the grasslands. And that's millions of bisons in addition to the tens of millions of deer, antelope, caribou, moose, and all of the other ruminants that graze on the land. But these great herds are no more. We have destroyed all of their populations. And grasslands evolved specifically with ruminant animals, large herds of ruminant animals. And without those animals, the world's grasslands are turning into deserts. The rate of desertification of brittle environment grasslands is huge. In only 100 years, the Romans turned the fertile Nile Valley into desert by using cultivated agriculture. Climate change does not cause desertification. Desertification causes climate change. Moving, we need to move animals over the land in planned grazing patterns that mimic the movements of these wild herds of animals. And that regenerates the soil and moves carbon from the atmosphere back down into the ground. So how does that work? What's regenerative agriculture? Plants, through photosynthesis, take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. They break it apart. They throw away the oxygen to us. We say, thank you, plants. <laughs> then they mix that carbon with the water in their root systems to create carbohydrates, sugars. Okay? They use some of these sugars to grow themselves. And they use the rest of it as currency. Because there's a whole secret world underground. The soil is not just a growing medium. It is a living creature. There is a layer in there called mycorrhizal fungi. And this living layer colonializes root systems of all plants. And this microbial layer mines minerals and nutrients in the soil and feeds them to the plants. But it needs a payoff. And I kind of like to think of it like the mycorrhizal fungi is the mafia. So they say to the plants, I've got a deal you can't refuse. Right? You give me some of your sugars, and I will give you any mineral you need. And the plants love this deal, because they have an unlimited ability to create sugars through photosynthesis. And so there it goes. The plants bring in the sugars, feed that layer of mycorrhizal fungi. The mycorrhizal fungi feed the specific nutrients and minerals that that plant is asking for. So what does the living soil do with this sugar? It feeds itself. It grows and it produces more soil. It creates little nubbins of carbon called glomalin, which keeps, it keeps underground forever. All above ground plant material is carbon. And when those plants are removed, eventually, as they all are, trees fall down, things are cut, that carbon goes back into the atmosphere, or can go back into the atmosphere. But the carbon in the soil stays in the soil forever unless humans till it. When we till or cultivate the soil and break up that microbial layer, we expose it to heat, to air, to light, and it dies. And it releases all of the carbon that we have allowed it to sequester in the ground. So if we remove the cows and the sheep from the land and till the soil to plant annual crops, like broccoli, soy, and quinoa, we are releasing all of that carbon that the living soil has worked so hard to sequester. I'll be working with farmers here to build training capacity to learn how to move animals in those systems. It uses less land, freeing up more space for alternate forms of agriculture. And so how do we feed both people and soil? It's regenerative agriculture, and we can eat our way out of climate change. <laughs>